Hello, welcome back. Um, any 3n plus 1 cycle of length k with x up moves is going to have a bottom member that's something over 2 to the k minus 3 to the x. And the bottom of a circuit is always 3 to the x minus 2 to the x over that same thing. So we'd like a simple way to show that this is never an integer for any co-prime k and x. It turns out there aren't too many prime factors p that are common to these two expressions in the first place. So last time we called those Kershaw primes, and the only Kershaw prime we could find was 331. And we found that P only divides both things if uh, 2 to the y is congruent to 3 to the y is congruent to 2 mod P for some y. So that gives us two ways to go look for more Kershaw primes. First, we can iterate through all the primes, and for each one try to find a y like this. Unfortunately, we only need to look at a few y's. Or we can iterate through all the y's and for each one see if the greatest common denominator uh, of 2 to the y minus 2 and 3 to the y minus 2 is greater than 1. Uh, if it is, then the GCD will give us some more Kirchhoff primes. So after the last video, I found two more Kirchhoff primes using these methods. And it's really cool that all three of them are either 1 or 3 mod 8. That means no matter how many of them we multiply together, the result is still going to be 1 or 3 mod 8. And this denominator is never 1 or 3 mod 8. Even Gersonides knew that in the year 1343. So if every Kirchhoff prime were either 1 or 3 mod 8, then this denominator would always have to have some non-Kirchhoff factor that the numerator wouldn't share, and so this could never be an integer. So I started trying to prove that every Kirchhoff prime was either 1 or 3 mod 8. And while I was doing that, I put out a call for a collaboration on the community tab channel, or the community tab of this YouTube channel, to find more Kirchhoff primes. And a huge shout out to user DLG03 for writing some optimized searching software and coming up with a fourth Kirchhoff prime. And here it is. And oops, it's 7 mod 8. So I guess having four examples of a concept is better than having three examples. Maybe there's some other way. So it turns out that 2 to the k minus 3 to the x can only be 1, 5, or 11 mod 12. It can't be 7 mod 12 unless k and x are both even, but then they wouldn't be coprime. And here are a bunch of other things that 2 to the k minus 3 to the x can't be. But the fourth Kirchhoff prime doesn't fall into any of these categories. So is there any succinct reason why it can't be characterized by 2 to the k minus 3 to the x? Or maybe it can be. So also on the Math Kook uh, community tab, collaborator Perryman138 came up with an amazing reason. This prime is 17 mod 91, but 2 to the k minus 3 to the x can never be 17 mod 91. Okay, so now each Kirchhoff prime has its own personal reason that it can't equal uh, the denominator. But we need some reason that will cover them all, including the Kirchhoff primes we haven't discovered yet. So math is hard. So let's keep working on that. Meanwhile, here's an easier th thing to think about. So 2 to the k minus 3 to the x will never equal a square, because every odd square is 1 mod 8. So can 2 to the k minus 3 to the x be a cube? Well, if we don't find any cubes, should we just keep looking for using more values of k and x? Or should we try to prove that there's never, ever going to be a cube? But what if there are no cubes, but there's also no reason for the lack of cubes? Like, there just don't happen to be any cubes. Well, that certainly makes you sit back and go, huh. And before really starting to seriously stress out about that idea, I found out that 2 to the 7th minus 3 to the first is 5 cubed, so there is at least one cube, and so the universe didn't explode. But still, what if the whole 3n plus 1 conjecture were true without any reason for it to be true? I mean, what if it just happened to be true? So that's some food for thought. Okay, see you next time.